Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's video covers the ACE 3000 which was the last known modern steam locomotive design of which had it actually been built it would have rivaled the performance in fuel efficiency of the diesels. So when one looks at a modern transportation system Trains always seem to come up, and that makes sense because U.S. railroads use one-third the fuel for every ton mile that a truck does. And when you have two or three man train crews that can move 300 trucks worth of goods at, in the minimum, you get a major labor cost and savings as well. And that was some of the key factors as to why U.S. rail traffic went seriously ballistic in the last 40 years. It's more than tripled in that time frame. But when you look at modern trains, they all run on diesel or electric. And building electric trains is very expensive. And diesel you know, trains rely on oil, which the U.S. imports in vast quantities. But what if the ACE 3000 project of 1985 had succeeded? Today in 2024, I seriously believe the ACE 3000 project would have gotten the financing to develop the project and build a prototype. And that's simply because the world at large, for the most part, has come to realize that fossil fuels are nearing an end and alternatives are needed. Whereas in the 1980s, the whole project depended on the rising and decline of the oil prices themselves. With the sharp decline, the project is doomed. With increases, the project is on. So the whole concept was in peril already, as it were, right from the get-go, as far as being able to justify the development of such a locomotive. So in the least, in today, 2024, I believe the program gets off the ground, at least in R&D, and it goes from there. So in basic definition, the ACE 3000 was to make a steam locomotive that would work on modern railroads. Now to be clear, the first design did not make all the efficiencies that it could have. The ice the idea still caught a lot of interest, particularly in the very coal-rich United States. Amongst these people were Argentinian engineer L.D. Porta and England's David Wardell, the latter having built the legendary South African Class 26 NC, which is commonly referred to as the Red Devil. The idea looked almost certain to succeed in the 1980s, but financial problems and lower oil prices doomed it. So in 1980, this is when the project really began, and that's when a new corporation was formed in the United States called American Coal Enterprises, or ACE for short. And this group was headed by financier Ross Rowland, who was well known for restoring and operating the Nickel Plate Roads 284, number 759, the Reddings 484-2101, and the Chesapeake and Ohio's 484, number 614. ACE was founded to develop practical coal-burning locomotives for modern American railways. The goal of this project was to shift American railroads from the use of imported diesel fuel to the use of indigenous coal, which is available in abundance in the United States. During that period of time, fuels derived from crude oils skyrocketed in prices since the oil embargoes of the 1970s. Coal, on the other hand, had remained stable in price for quite some time. The chief design goal of ACE was to, to develop a steam locomotive which is just as simple to operate and economical to maintain as a diesel-electric locomotive was. So earlier in 1980, a meeting had been called to discuss the possibility of reintroducing coal-fired locomotives to American railways. And present at that meeting were Ross Rowland, William Withoon, Bill Benson, and L.D. Porta, among other technology experts. All of them agreed that the time was ripe and plans were made to develop a prototype steam locomotive using advanced technology. Porta had already been considering the possibility of the need for advanced coal burning locomotives for several years and he had a basic design concept ready at the time of this meeting. Porta's initial concept for ACE was a fast freight 210O and this would be a second generation steam locomotive and was not expected to seamlessly fit into existing U.S. railways operation. Now this particular idea of the project I do not agree with. I don't understand why you need a second generation steam locomotive that wasn't as modern as it should be in those times. To me you can skip right over that project and go straight to what you really want. Because R&D is needed either way, whether it be a second generation or a third generation. So, 
Porter wanted to build this type of locomotive while other members of the ACE team evidently thought that it was absolutely necessary to produce a 100% sellable machine even as the first prototype. As a result, the concept for the ACE 3000 is what we saw in the Trains uh, magazine and that's the one design that took shape. Now, I don't agree with the rest of the team about a sellable machine. I agree to develop a 100% modern steam locomotive and one that utilized modern technology and could match the diesel uh, performance in every way, if not exceed. That was the ultimate goal, not necessarily to make money, but to progress steam and trans the railroad transportation system into the next generation. And one that didn't rely on fossil fuel. Because in my mind, if you develop such a locomotive, the money takes care of itself as far as being sellable. It's developing the technology and the machine. And countless times, this is where corporations lose sight of the whole thing because of money in itself. Let me know in the comments below if you think my entire train of thinking on the whole project is incorrect or correct. So, the project was to be known as the ACE 3000. It was intended to be a coal-burning steam locomotive, which would somehow be made compatible with a modern railroad operating environment. Judging that the EMD GP40 diesel electric of 3000 crankshaft horsepower was pretty much the average railway locomotive, the ACE team set out to design a steamer that could effectively compete against it. In the least, the ACE 3000 was to be capable, capable of 3,000 nominal drawbar horsepower, 4,000 horsepower peak, and efficient operating speed range of 15 to 70 miles an hour. It was also to have computer-controlled firing and a typical, not peak, thermal efficiency of at least 15%. While the ACE, ACE team acknowledged that this efficiency was much less than a modern diesel-electric locomotive, which had the efficiency output of about 30%, they knew that the immense cost difference in coal and diesel oil will allow a less efficient coal-burning locomotive to be much more economical to fuel than a very efficient coal-burning diesel locomotive. Now, it was claimed that the locomotive would be rugged, relatively simple, and use only proven technology. But unexpectedly to some, the proposed engine did not feature rotary cam poppet valves, a 1200 PSI water tube boiler, or a steam turbine prime mover. What the ACE team had done was carefully studied failed advanced steam attempts from the 1940s and 50s. And in reference, that would be locomotives such as the John Henry, the S1, S2 projects of the Pennsylvania Railroad, etc. So the ACE team had concluded that these items had never stood up to the harsh railroad environments and moreover were entirely unnecessary to achieve their design goals. The ACE 3000 was to use a reciprocating four-cylinder compound expansion piston drive with Walshirt's Walsh valve gears that used actuated piston valves. The design was also to have a 300 PSI fire tube boiler with a bell pair firebox as well as computer control of the multitude of tests taken care of in steam days by experienced engineer or fireman would allow a diesel educated engineer to run the locomotive effectively. So from that point, the, the project went dormant for a few years and uh, then in 1985, ACE came into the spotlight again as oil prices resumed their climb. In a spectacular demonstration of steam showmanship, Roland brought out his 484 number 614 from the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, Railroad and actually ran the locomotive on the now CSX Railway in the mountains of West Virginia in revenue service. The Foster and Wheeler Boiler Company was brought on board to assist with testing and new boiler design. In January of 1985, 614 operated under some of the most grueling conditions imaginable with temperatures as low as negative 20 uh, Fahrenheit. And this was in an attempt to provide test data on steam locomotive performance to be used by the ACE design team. To acquire that data, an extensive array of sensors were installed on the number 614 by engineers from Foster Wheeler and tied into recorders located in a test car behind the engine and tender. And these sensors would allow real-time measurements to be made on a working steam locomotive under realistic conditions. This attempt at, to uh, collect the data was marginally successful because of the harsh conditions and whatnot. 
And also problems with the locomotive itself arose because unfortunately the 614 soon experienced severe firebox problems including cracks, leaking stays, and cinder erosion of tubes, all of which greatly hindered its performance as the test went on and greatly lowered its efficiency. And this likely happened because of the lack of time to inspect a firebox and the, and the boiler system, what have you, against this kind of problem. And not only that, but the 614's booster failed, which also severely hampered her low-speed performance. And as a result of all this, the locomotive achieved a 6% efficiency rating at its peak and then actually had dipped below 4% and averaged slightly over 3% uh, for the time it was actually in service. And this decline was obviously be attributed to the problems. So while trying to raise funds to support construction of two ACE prototypes, the ACE team members proposed interim locomotives which could be built less expensively to prove the ACE concept. ACE had a short schedule, a minimum engineering team, and limited financial resources. Porta and Wardell convinced Roland that the design and construction of a reliable ACE 3000 with the available resources was not practical. As a result, the team agreed that Porter's original idea of an SGS prototype was the most viable course. While this started out as Porter's fast freight 210 called the Mark I, but was later renamed to the ACE 6000 for its estimated horsepower rating, this soon evolved into a cab forward 2102 called the Mark I-B, with an enclosure to avoid the dreaded appearance of a classical steam locomotive. Porta's concept of the locomotive was considerably more handsome. So while all this was going on, the Chessie system got wind of this and was put off in the shift in the ACE corporate, corporate design philosophy and a sharp drop in the price of diesel fuel greatly reduced the CSX's interest in converting to coal fuel. So at that point, the CSX had little interest in financing the ACE prototype. While they had already contributed significant funding, Chessie withdrew their support for the project. There was also high hopes that the U.S. government, who had set aside millions for projects to produce liquid fuels from coal, would back the ACE project. One of the chief aims of the January 1985 test was to gain publicity for the project. Unfortunately, no federal funds were ever released to ACE. So, in conclusion, to this video, ACE was only a small company with limited finances and a limited engineering staff. ACE's best hope was to sell their coal-fired locomotive concept effectively enough to persuade someone to back it with massive funding. This would have allowed the required engineering and management resources to be devoted to accomplish the project in a short period of time. And the one thing among the ACE management was the idea that nothing would sell the concept like an actual locomotive burning coal and pulling trains. These men thought that an advanced second generation steam locomotive would have been built within their time and budget constraints. While this was not what the American railways were looking for, it may have been a far more effective sales tool than brochures, graphs, and drawings that could be built. Perhaps such a locomotive would have spurred the necessary interest to finance the ACE project and successfully sustain a steam rebirth in the United States. And once again, I disagree with the second generation. If you're going to do it, develop the modern, you know, fully capable locomotive. But that's just me. And with that, I'll wrap up the video. And I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's co uh, content, please hit the like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Both features help the channel grow immensely. And support our efforts by either doing the super thanks or visiting our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.